Hiya folks! Yesterday I did a video about that precept of following the rules of society and it created a little bit of backlash or something. Of course, uh, somebody went immediately to, what if the rules of your society are made by Hitler? Uh, you know, and so even though I'd mentioned that already in the, in the passage and then somebody else was like, well, I never heard that rule from... I'm just making, I, I don't know if that's what you sound like, commenter, but I don't know about that rule in any other precept ceremony. So I looked it up and did my due diligence, which, which please give me some credit <laughs> because it's hard to do. I am staying, as I keep saying, at my girlfriend's house. I've not slept in my own bed for two months now, and all my books are at home. Well, not all of them, because I brought a bunch of them here, uh, enough to annoy the heck out of her, but uh, not all of my books. So the, the, all the books that I would have used to, to, to check this out are mostly over there, and I can't use them. So I'm having to figure it out on the internet and I figure out which sources are trustworthy and which are not, and blah, blah, blah. I like books a lot better than doing research on the internet. I know in, in a lot of ways internet research is more convenient, but uh, books I, I feel are better in the end, in the long run. But anyway, here we go. In Chinese characters, the precept is Shu Ritsugi Kai. And I'll try to put that down on the screen for you there. And that's always a pain in the butt to do, is to put Chinese characters on the screen. So I'm glad some people show appreciation when I do that, because it's not that easy with this program. And I don't anticipate it being easy today. But anyway, that's, that's the, the uh, characters used. And you can kind of discard the first character, Shu or To, because that's Toru, to take. And the last character is Kai, and that's precept. So it's the, the first character is to take, and the sec, and the final, the fourth character, is precept. So it's really the middle two that you got to worry about because for all the precepts, the, the first and last one are the same. In contemporary Japanese, those middle two characters are pronounced richigi, and uh, that's slightly different. And they are in contemporary Japanese, they mean upright honest, faithful, conscientious, or sincere. The first of these two characters in, in uh, Nichigi is, uh, could stand for rhythm, law, regulation, gauge, or control, and the second one, uh, ceremony, is a common uh, translation for it. Rule is probably the one we're most uh, interested in, in this case, uh, a fair case or matter. And here's some alternate translations. Uh, the San Francisco Zen Center has this precept as, I vow to refrain from all evil. Uh, Upaya Zen Center gives it as, do not commit evil, and then in parentheses, to practice not knowing, thereby giving up fixed ideas about my Self in the universe. Interesting. Uh, Village Zendo out in New York uh, has not knowing, thereby giving up fixed ideas about myself in the universe. Wow, that's quite the same. Uh, this is ceasing from evil. Uh, an article I found in Tricycle Magazine uh, gives it, I think, from a Theravada source as renounce all evil. Uh, Dido Lori, not creating evil. Uh, James Ford uh, says ceasing evil or renouncing evil. Okay. And most scholars trace the origin of this precept back to a statement in the Dharmapada, which is a collection of sayings from the Buddha. It's one of those uh, Los Angeles police helicopters. That gives you a little local color for you. I, I hope he's uh, not coming after me for being without a mask and being outside. Anyway, uh, the Dharmapada phrase that this apparently comes from is to avoid all evil, to cultivate good, and to cleanse one's mind. This is the teaching of the Buddhas. And if we go to volume four of Master Dogen's Shobo Genzo, we can find a very short bit about that. And this is the Nishijima Cross translation, so the one Guru Nishijima did with his student Mike Cross, Chodo Cross. And they give it as, where the heck is it? Number one, the precept of observance of rules. Uh, so if you actually gave the, the, the thing as a direct translation from the four Chinese characters that are used, that's what Nishijima and Cross did for, uh, for most of this uh, book, for pretty much all of this book. And they take those four Chinese characters and turn them into the precept of observance of rules, which is, I think, pretty good. Uh, from your present body until attainment of the Buddha's body, can you keep this precept or not? And you should answer, I can keep it. 
and you're asked three times and answered three times. And that's all that uh, Dogen has to say about that specific one uh, there. But he also says this, which is the thing that I uh, mentioned in the Kodo Sawaki quote that I gave you yesterday. And this is the full quotation from Ben Doho. I'm not going to read the whole Ben Doho, but this is, um, uh, this is what Dogen says, and this is where that quotation that Kodo Sawaki referenced comes from. It comes from the first paragraph. All Buddhas and all ancestors are within the way and engage it. Without the way, they would not engage it. The Dharma exists and they appear. Without the Dharma, they do not appear. Therefore, when the assembly is sitting, sit together with them. As the assembly gradually lies down, lie down also. In activity and stillness, at one with the community, throughout deaths and rebirths, do not separate from the monastery. Standing out has no benefit. Being different from others is not our conduct. That's the part that uh, Kota Sawaki referenced. This is the Buddha's and ancestors' skin, flesh, bones, and marrow, and also one's own body and mind dropped off. Therefore, engaging the way is the practice enlightenment before the empty kalpa, so do not be concerned with your actualization. It is the koan before judgments, so do not wait for great realization. Interesting little quote there. So I, I hope that you can see from that that when the precept is given as follow the rules of society, it means something sort of like follow the rules of polite society or, or follow the normal rules of social interaction. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean follow every law that every politician gives you. You know, I think some people were reading it, it that, you know, and going, well, if it's Hitler, it must be bad, you know, those kind of things. It doesn't mean that. It means comport yourself as a good member of society. And if you read the some of the Dogen quotes, it, it, it could be kind of massage to mean comport yourself as a member of the Buddhist society. But I think it uh, in the raw form, it means more the overall society. So, so do so be a decent person uh, in the way that decent people act in a society. That's really all it means. Uh, it, it, it doesn't need to get any fancier than that. It doesn't need to get any more detailed than that. It just means be a decent person. Don't be a jerk. It's, it's another rephrasing of the, the phrase that I used as the title of my third to most recent book, Don't Be a Jerk. Uh, is just don't be a jerk. Just, uh, just be a decent person. And this is, uh, this is extremely important because I think a lot of people will take their religious vows in a completely different direction. The, the thing, one of the few things that me and my girlfriend can both agree upon to watch on TV, we really have, we, we're very much alike in a lot of ways, but we have very different tastes in what we want to watch on TV, um, is documentaries about religious cults. So we've been watching a bunch of documentaries and, and things about religious cults. We just watched that uh, show Waco that's on uh, Netflix right now, which takes a kind of an interesting look at the Waco thing, and then watched a documentary about uh, the Waco cult. And, and for those of you who might not remember, uh, at Waco, Texas was the site of the center of a religious cult called the Branch Davidians, who in 1993 uh, had a big standoff with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, which ended with the, the whole compound burning down and lots of people dying, including, I think, 23 children that were stuck in there when the place burned down. And nobody knows why it burned down, and people have all sorts of theories, and et cetera, et cetera. But uh, suffice to say, things went very wrong with that cult. And then last night, we watched a documentary about, um, what was it, the Aum Shinrikyo. Why don't I remember that? That's the cult that's, that did the subway uh, um, poisoning in, in Japan, also in the early 90s, uh, 1995. I was there in Tokyo when that happened. Remember it very well. And the other one we watched was a documentary about the um, Heaven's Gate. Heaven's Gate cult, uh, who also in the 90s <laughs> killed themselves because they were going to ascend to a UFO that was following the Hale-Bopp comet. 
Uh, and one of the things you find in a lot of these uh, religious cults, and you find in religions in general too, is this kind of feeling that their morality, their religious morality, transcends secular morality. So, so they're better than the rest of the world, and they're going to do their morality and either force it upon the rest of the world somehow or or just you know just do it anyway in spite of what other people say the buddhist idea is very different from that like totally different so one of the first vows you take is be a decent member of the society that you live in now you know i know everybody's going to take this in the not everybody but i know somebody's going to take it in the hitler direction and and of course if hitler is your is your leader then then maybe there might be some some things you're at odds with in society, you know, and the way things are doing, but you're still going to try to be a decent member of society, you know, I mean, you're still going to say please and thank you and all of that stuff, so, so it even, you know, even works out there, it, it, you know, it, it doesn't mean that you don't go against, you know, bad leadership or whatever, but I think people have a, a tendency these days to get really over dramatic, especially when it comes to Hitler and comparisons of Hitler to certain current members of certain governments who are not Hitler. Uh, and, but, you know, everybody wants to wants to live in a dramatic age, I guess, and that, we got what we wanted, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, that was for sure. We got to live in the most dramatic time of all. Good news, huh? That's what we're all clamoring for, for, for years. I feel like American society was clamoring for, for, let's live in a dramatic age, and <laughs> we got it. Get what you want. There's a whole talk to be done about that, and maybe I'll do it one of these days, but just something I'd like to point out. Anyway, that's what following the rules of society means, and that's, you know, where it comes from, and I hope you enjoyed that little bit. And uh, remember, you can donate to me via PayPal and Patreon. The links are below, and I really, really appreciate those of you who continue to contribute, even with the financial hardships everybody's going through, and I'll say it again, because I say it all the time. Don't feel like you have to or you're obligated. There are people who are contributing, and, and so far, so good, as long as the lockdown doesn't consider, continue till infinity, like uh, some people seem to want it to. Uh, maybe we'll be all right. So we'll see you next time. Hopefully things will be good where you are, and stay well and stay clean.